But what I'd push you to think about, right, is that markets always change. Consumers always change, no matter what industry you're in. Whether you're in candy, which is kind of fun, whether you're in conventions, supplying conventions, whether you're in education, markets change. And if you're going to stay on top, if you're going to stay relevant to your consumers, you have to anticipate change, and you have to be creative. You have to be innovative. Otherwise, you get left behind. It was interesting in 2010, and, and most recently last year as well, IBM ran a study, and they asked a big sample, close to 2,000 CEOs from around the world, and they said to them, hey, what is the most important thing in terms of leadership in your organization as you move forward? Think ahead 10 years. What do you need in your toolbox? What do you need as a leader to run your organization? And what was so, so cool for me specifically was they said creativity. IBM had thought they'd say things like integrity because this was just after the crash, authenticity, things like this. But they said creativity. And this last year they said curiosity, which is interesting. And if you're a leader and you need these things, it makes me say, why? If you look back 10 years, right, you can start to see some of the answer to that why. Now, I was told, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it, a little bit of audience participation. If you don't mind, I think they gave you a notebook. You may have liberated that at the front. Do you mind pulling out a pen and a notebook really quickly for me? Or if you don't have the little notebook, just a pen and a piece of paper, back of your computer, anything. And so what I want you to do, if you pull out that pen and that piece of paper, because I'm going to ask you to do a couple things in this session, what I'd love for you to do is just take a look to the person next to you. So just take a look at the person next to you right now, if you don't mind. See, take a look. You're probably sitting next to your friend. Oh, she's jumping over. Okay, so now you've taken a look at it. What I want you to do, and I beg you to participate with me, is I'm going to give you one minute right now to draw that person. So go ahead and draw them. Yeah, right now. People like that, I don't know why. Okay, bring it back, bring it back to center. Simmer, simmer, settle, simmer. Okay, ridiculous little activity, right? And if we break it down for just a second, what was the initial reaction from the studio audience when I asked you to do that? So in no way, what else? I can't draw. A lot of nervous laughter. I heard some apologies. And you guys were good sports, you actually started doing it, right? And, and again, I did hear a few more apologies, something about a chin and a forehead being too big over here. Ours was too small, okay. And then at the end, when I asked you to show it to the person, what happened then? More laughter, more apologies, right? Why, why the heck does that happen? Why is it uncomfortable? Most of you were uncomfortable. Some of you embraced it. Some of you took out a phone and took a picture instead. A few things happened there. But why is that so hard? It's embarrassing? I'm not in my comfort zone. What else? I don't want to offend. I'm no good at it. <laughs> I know how to do that. Okay. <laughs> These are the common reactions when you're asked to do something that you're not comfortable doing. That, that you know, being artistic, being creative, doing something different. It's hard. And in many ways, our education system right, tells us that we shouldn't do that. There's a classic story about the CEO of Hallmark Cards. And he tells it how he goes into a kindergarten class to talk to the kids about, you know, this is what I do for a job. And he admires all the artwork on the, on the walls. And he says, in the kindergarten class, when he asks the kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? Do any of you want to be artists? All of them put up their hands. Yeah, I want to be an artist. And then he talks about doing it in grade one. And two, by grade three, you know, only 20% of the kids are putting their hands up. And by grade six, none of the kids put their hands up. And there's been a lot of discussion over the last 10 years. And some of you have probably seen the talk by Ken Robinson, right, on TED. That's a great one. Maybe you've read Daniel Pink's book as well. That perhaps our education system, and I teach in a business school, and that really does this, right, tends to reduce the creativity that we have when we're little. And, and we tend to lose it, right? Some people point to actually 
LSATs and GREs and GMATs and the, the tests that we take, even the IQ test, 1905, Alfred Bernay, pushes us away from creativity because it teaches us causal reasoning, teaches us reading comprehension, and we lose some of this creativity that can really ha help us. And so what's interesting is a lot of business schools, a lot of schools in general, governments, the UK government, the Chinese government, have pushed the education system to try to bring creativity back. But one of the big questions they struggle with is, is what is creativity? Because, yeah, it's great to have that. We need it in business. We need it in whatever we're doing when it comes to marketplace and consumers. But what is creativity? What do you think? If I ask you to pause for a second, what would you say creativity is? I'll ask this gentleman with the computer. What do you think? Put on the spot. And if you don't have an answer, you can pass it to the guy next to you. He looks great. Throw him under the bus. He will help you out. He's shaking his head. He won't help you out. So being open and willing to express yourself freely, I like that. And some people say that that's what creativity is. The ability to take things from other places and put them together in a different way, a way that nobody's seen before. And that relates to a lot of the comments that people said. Imagination helps you do that. Thinking out of the box, that's what it is by definition. I'm not sure about the Chinese comment, but maybe we can make that work, right? So when I think about creativity, for me, I like to think of it as a mashup. And there's a, a kind of a cool website called Everything's a Mashup that says creativity is that. It's taking things and putting them together in ways that nobody's ever seen before. So when you're designing a room, designing a party, designing a business course, designing a convention, taking things you've seen at other places and bringing them together in unusual ways. Now the next question then is can you actually learn to be creative? What do you guys think? Yes, no? So some yes, yes, a no, a hater over here, I love it. And people have different opinions. Some people say no, that it's, you're born creative and you can't learn it. Other people say no, it's all about socialization. And people have different opinions. I'm not here to tell you which is right or wrong, but I see this as, as a muscle. That all of us are born, especially when we're little, we're really creative, think of your kids. In that muscle, if you exercise it, it gets stronger and you get better at it. If you don't, then it kind of falls away. We don't fail enough anymore. And there's a few companies that we look at and we say, wow, they're really innovative. It's because they're okay with failure. They're willing to experiment. They're willing to try things. Not fail over and over, but learn from the failure, experiment again. This is a fundamental part of creativity. Thank <music> you.